Good morning, Your Holiness. It is very nice to meet you virtually today. On behalf of the organizing team, thank you very much for accepting our request for this online youth dialogue. This dialogue is initiated by Mr. Jimba Gatso, coordinator of your Southeast Asia oh, office. <laughs> And it's jointly organized by 13 organizations across Southeast Asia countries. Today, we are... Oh. Okay. Today, we are also very honored to have three distinguished academic guests joining the dialogue today. Our first guest is Mr. Kiso Mabubani from Singapore. He is a distinguished fellow at Asia Research Institute, formerly the Dean of National University of Singapore Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy for 14 years and over three decades as a Singapore permanent representative to the United Nations during his time at Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you, Mr. Kisho. Our second guest is Professor Imtiaz Ahmad Salka Yusos from Malaysia. He is the Deputy Dean of the Student Development and Community Engagement at International Islamic University of Malaysia. He is also the Coordinator of Islam and Buddhist Program at International Institute of Islamic Thoughts and Civilization. Thank you, Mr. Yusof. And our third guest is Associate Professor Kama Onyak Kama Ruzaman from Malaysia. She's an author and lecturer at International Islamic University of Malaysia and the International Institute of Islamic Thoughts and Civilization. She, civilized, she specialized in comparative religion and actively involved in social work and interfaith engagement. Thank you, Professor Kama. Your Holiness, uh, since the outbreak of coronavirus this January, this year, many lives have undergone tremendous changes at work or at home in a very short span of six months. The rapid spread of the virus to even the most remote village of the Amazon have created a lot of anxiety and fear. With the global lockdown, strained health care system, increased mental health issues, and high unemployment rate, the youth are facing with uncertainty on how the future lies for them. The world has become more complex and more interconnected and seemingly harder to deal with more than before. And today in our call, we have over 700 youth, mainly from Southeast Asia countries. Uh, 13 of them today, 13 of the youth today, a mixture of youth, uh, students and adults will be asking their question to you directly. However, before that, Your Holiness, what would be your advice to the young leaders of the future in this current situation? Thank you, Your Holiness. Okay. Thank you. Uh, firstly, I appreciate the organizer is who created this opportunity. So thank you very much. Then I always you see, uh, share with other people. And one of my fundamental belief, that is entire uh, seven billion human being, we are same. Uh, from the Buddhist viewpoint, entire sentient being is same. Uh, in the sense, all have the desire of uh, having happy life, happy family. Uh, even small birds, they also have that same desire. Now we human being, uh, because of our intelligence, and unfortunately, our intelligence sometimes is combined with our destructive emotion. Other animals also, you see, 
uh, destructive emotion there, but they have no uh, such intelligence. So you see their uh, uh, activities, the, uh, the I mean, uh, problem created by their sort of uh, activities, animal limited. But we human being, because of our uh, I see this wonderful brain, we develop technology, science. Unfortunately, technology, science, is used for war, for violence, making weapon, including hydrogen bomb. You see, these are uh, other animal cannot do. We human being, this uh, wonderful brain, uh, under control of destructive emotion, then you see these uh, negative things happen. So since I think a lot of problems today we are facing, uh, the humanity or world facing, is essentially our own creation. So now, uh, since a lot of problems, uh, our own creation, therefore, we have the responsibility to tackle this problem to reduce this problem. Logically, problem which created by a human being, then logically we also have the uh, ability to reduce this problem. So now, uh, basic thing is, uh, basic human nature, now according to scientists, some scientists, they say basic human nature is more compassionate because we are social animal. Any social animal, there is sense of concern of their own community. So we also use a social animal. So from birth, we have the sense of concern of our uh, community. So now, uh, uh, that's I think the, uh, the the ultimate sort of source of our uh, strength, compassion, uh, uh, altruism. Altruism there, uh, then the enthusiasm, energy automatically come. So now today, uh, important, one of my commitment is seven billion human being, whether believer or non-believer, we should have a sense of more or say the altruistic sort of uh, thinking. Because that, you see, part of our nature and the reality also now today's world, too much division. Mm. And that, say, uh, causing too much strong sort of sense of we and they. And then including war happen. So now, a sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. Uh, then, there's no basis to killing each other. Uh, so therefore, my number one commitment is try to promote sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. Different nationality, different country, different religion, that is secondary. That's more or less private business. Mainly, we are human beings. I think, uh, for example, when we uh, also the uh, also the in in remote area, 
when we, you see, uh, some way, we, we just want oneself lonely, remain there, then one human being approach, then first the reaction is, oh, one human being there. You see, no sort of idea what is nationality, what is religion, what is racist, no. So long, you see, two legs, two arms, or human face, then we simply you see, feel, oh, there's one human being there, I can seek some help from him. That is nature. So therefore, uh, today, uh, uh, really, we need too many problems because we too much, uh, or should they emphasis uh, differences. That's the secondary. Uh, the only the remedy to reduce that, we must go deeper way where all seven billion, seven billion human beings are same human being. Same way born, same way taking mother's milk, uh, same way die. <laughs> so, uh, while we alive, uh, much better live together with sense of oneness of seven billion human beings, and then uh, try to promote uh, human compassion, uh, human loving kindness. Uh, so that's my number one commitment. So I want to share with you. Then number two commitment, religious harmony. On this planet, uh, over a thousand years, I think almost 3,000 years, different religious traditions develop. Uh, all uh, carry the message of love. In spite of different philosophy, different concept, all, you see, carry the practice of love and forgiveness. Uh, tolerance. So all major religious tradition, different philosophy, there are. Some say there is creator. Uh, those theistic religion, they believe creator. They, and then those non-theistic religion, uh, you see, no belief, no idea of creator, ourself, you see, created. And then as the scientists say, evolu evolution. Gradually, uh, we human being, uh, from monkey, uh, from further, further, as a further goes, uh, some, you see, I think originally some jelly, because jellyfish or something, then gradually, you see, come to oh, earth, as of the, Land. On land. Oh, or land. Then, gradually, you see, uh, we develop like that. So our brain also, you see, mm, thousand years, several thousand years, gradually develop with our physical. So therefore, the uh, different philosophical view but all carry the same message, message of love. So, uh, on that basis, uh, religious harmony certainly can develop. India is one example. All world major religious tradition live together in India. Like Judaism, Christian, or Christianity, and then uh, Zorazuddin, all these different, what is it, uh, religious tradition live together here. We never heard, you see, problem. For example, problem between Shia and the Sunni. I never heard. You see, this country, 
In the past history, sometimes some problems, but basically India is the example religious harmony. So uh, India, uh, number two, mo number two most populated nation. Uh, but religious harmony, there. Yeah. So therefore, the, my number two commitment is uh, try to promote religious harmony and mutual learning and work together. Uh, and then third, third my commitment, I'm Tibetan. Tibetan people, uh, trust me. They put a lot of hope on, on me. So I have moral responsibility. So regarding Tibet, uh, my main concern is preservation of Tibetan or say the language because Tibetan language is the closest language with Sanskrit. So the ancient uh, Buddhist tradition, a Pali tradition, a Sanskrit tradition, is we Tibetan over a thousand years, the Sanskrit tradition, see, we translated number of Sanskrit text and a Pali text. So together, all together, 300 volumes. You see, we study these uh, texts and meditate. Very useful. So that uh, knowledge, I feel, uh, not only Tibetan, uh, uh, I said the Tibet, Tibetan knowledge or Tibetan thing, but is we can I can say Tibetan knowledge, which come from Nalanda tradition, is really precious of world. Uh, whether believer or non-believer, in Sanskrit tradition, a lot of sort of explanation about logic, about philosophy. Uh, these uh, we can consider academic subject, not religious subject. So therefore, I really feel worthwhile to preserve Tibetan knowledge since 8th century. The Shadarakshita from Nalanda, uh, invited by Tibetan king. And she, I mean he, great logician, great philosopher. So, uh, with Tibetan, uh, over a thousand years, follow his advice seriously. So, I feel this knowledge really worthwhile preserve. For that, Tibetan language, very, very useful. So that's my, and then another thing is Tibetan environment. Tibet, high altitude, uh, and most of the river uh, which cover from Pakistan, India, uh, uh, then uh, of course Bangladesh and this country, and also the Vietnam, and then China. Yellow River. So, the major river which cover whole Asia, uh, the ultimate source from Tibet. Therefore, Tibetan ecology is it should sort of preserve. Uh, particularly now, global warming, year by year, or decade by decade, uh, the global warming now very very uh, I mean, obviously I myself also also experience when I came to Dharamsala 1960 that winter a lot of snow <coughs> then each year snow less 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 so that's clear sign of global warming so. Uh, now global warming really become very serious. So Tibet ecology uh, preserve this 
sources of this river, very important. And then my fourth commitment, that is, uh, since this knowledge originally come from India, uh, modern India now should pay more attention this ancient Indian knowledge and secular way, not religious thing, uh, not considered as a religion or Buddhism, but simply, for example, logic, you see, the, or the, simply sort of also the training our mind, sharpening our mind, and nothing to do with next life or you know, heaven, simply this very life, you see, become more peaceful. So India, ahimsa, non-violence, uh, over 3,000 years, this concept, and karuna, compassion. That's the Indian tradition. So uh, modern India uh, now should pay more attention to preserve non-violence and compassion, these things. India have the, also the possibility to combine inner value and material value uh, com combined. So that's my latest uh, the fourth commitment, like that. So now here, you, uh, as a human brother or sisters, uh, think about my four commitment. Uh, if you find some useful, then try to implement and then share with more young people today's world, too much materialistic thinking, and not much sort of thinking about our inner value. And psychologically, as you say, I think a modern, uh, modern education, uh, modern, modernity, only sort of concern uh, sensorial consciousness. Not much thinking about a sixth mind. Sixth mind, you see, without uh, also they, they depend on eye consciousness, ear consciousness, uh, because of the smell consciousness, all this, uh, ignore. But sixth mind, there, the, also the, uh, the, also the basis of shamatha, single-pointed meditation, and uh, vipassana, analytical meditation. These two are related with sixth mind, not senses of organs. So these, mm, I think, as you know, in modern time, uh, uh, materialistic life now pay more about our inner value. Firstly, inner sixth mind, like that. So, now questions and, and, and any, any sort of uh, advice from some or the professors. <laughs> yes. Good morning, His Holiness. Uh, My name is from Thailand. I am 24 years old and currently a marketing strategist. And my questions today is, when it comes to compassion, why is it easier to be compassionate to others rather than to ourselves? Thank you. Hmm. Uh, as some scientists say, you see, we are social animal. Even so, I said, uh, when we born, the mother uh, provide us 
sort of immense compassion, nothing to do with religion. The children also, you see, without that, we can't survive. So that's the, the way we start our life. So the loving kindness from other is till our death, very important. Dying person, uh, you may, that person may have a lot of gold, diamond, sort of, uh, <laughs> diamond or th things. Oh, say, that dying person, no f sort of get inspiration. Right? Huh? Affection. Inspiration. The dying person is surrounded with human being, with showing genuine sense of concern. Then the dying person feel happy. So our life begin with human compassion. Uh, at the end of our life, surrounded with compassionate person, the dying person much happier. So that we should know. And then those billionaire or the leaders uh, without compassion, uh, without inner peace, they won't, they actually uh, may not be happy person. Always anxiety, always sort of scare or suspicion like that. So therefore, the, uh, uh, the compassion is very, very important. Uh, should not consider compassion is some religious matter. No. It's for human beings' survival like that. Okay. Next. Your Holiness, the next question is from uh, Hong Kong uh, young adults. Hong Kong. Hmm? Yes. Good morning, His Holiness. My name is Wee and I'm from Hong Kong. I'm currently a movie maker and I'm 29 years old. And my question today is um, mental bullying on the internet makes uh -huh. young people self-harm or attempt suicide. So how should the youth handle their emotion and face all this negativity that impacts them? Thank you. Karsa. I believe, uh, you know, our intelligence actually entirely belongs to ourselves. So we can uh, look on uh, different ideas, sort of different sort of ideology or even different religion, but the ultimate uh, sort of decision uh, up to ourselves. So Buddha, now for example, Buddha uh, himself, you see, told us, uh, oh, my follower should not accept my teaching out of faith, but rather thorough investigation. Uh, uh, through that way, if you find some useful, then you accept, then you follow. So therefore, the uh, individual intelligence, great role. So we should not sort of follow some kind of just a faith or investigation, investigation. That is very important. In my own case, I'm Buddhist. As a, uh, from childhood, I study this Nalanda tradition, logical approach. So the, even Buddha's own word, we always raise question, why? Why Buddha say that? Then investigate. So therefore, uh, that very useful, uh, not just faith, not believe, but investigate, investigation. 
like that. So you, young person, utilize your uh, intelligence, unbiased, neutral, and then invest more investigation. And then every sort of your work, your life, you sit through investigation, analyze, analyze. Then you find now this way is the best, and you also you see, can seek some of your trusted friends' uh, views. Then follow that. Then even there are some problems facing, so no regret. I try to uh, investigate and seek some advice. So uh, that's I said, the right, right, right way or right path. My own case, now uh, uh, 80, 85, 85 years old, uh, about, oh, I think, 13, 13, 14, I lost my freedom. Then uh, my age, because around 20, uh, I, I become a refugee. I lost my own country. Uh, and then, uh, since 59, it's an inside situation, a lot of sort of problem, a lot of suffering. Uh, but uh, my, uh, as, as I sort of uh, mentioned already, so when difficult situation happen, to an analyze, uh, I decide this decision out of thorough investigation. Now this is best. So even some problems, consequences, some happen, no regret. Okay. Then basically, now we, uh, Tibet, India, uh, historically, very close link. So now India, uh, the democratic uh, country. Uh, so, now last, uh, 60 years, 60 years, I become, uh, I enjoy the India's freedom. Okay. <laughs> Your Holiness, the next question is from a student from Malaysia. Yes. Good morning, His Holiness. My name is Jiajin and I'm from Malaysia. I'm 20 years old this year. Here is my question. Yes. Oh. I was retrenched from work under current recession. Is it due to my bad karma? How can I overcome this? Does religion help? Thank you. Karsa, karma. Hmm. You are young, hmm. so I think long future. Uh, so you should not remain with feeling of hopeless, hopelessness. Don't think that way. For temporary, some problem, but always possible to overcome that. So self-confidence, enthusiasm, positive attitude, very important. If you just, uh, due to certain difficulties, that you lost your hope and discourage, that's wrong. I think, uh, say many past or say the great people, uh, including religious leader, through difficult experiences and then determined 
and carry their effort uh, stylishly, and then win. So, you, uh, young brother, you should not uh, th think, you should discourage, you now I lost uh, my job or something. Don't think that way. Okay. Now, next. Your Holiness, the next question is a young lady from Singapore. Oh. Good morning, Your Holiness. I'm Saint, a 20-year-old currently studying in Singapore. And my question is, uh, with the millennials becoming less religious, do you think that religion will still have a huge impact 20 years down the road? Thank you. As I mentioned before, you see whether uh, accept religion or not, uh, we have experience when uh, when you, uh, I say, for example, shopping, visit. You see, people showing more smile, you feel happy, isn't it? Oh, when you met someone with a serious sort of face, you are uh, unhappy, isn't it? So, the whether uh, accept religion, religious belief or not, the essence of religion is warm-heartedness. So there's even animal, uh, some dogs, uh, if you show them a little smile, and then a genuine sort of a warm feeling to show, then dogs, their tail go like that. If you, your face, more angry face, and even dogs, you say, don't like that. <laughs> Isn't it? So therefore, uh, so long we are human beings, uh, so long we have to live with the human society. Warm-heartedness. Through warm-heartedness uh, and calm mind, today's, even today's your enemy, the, after some time, may become best friend. So ultimately, everything depends on yourself. Warm-heartedness. I believe that. Okay. So I, uh, the younger generation, the modern education, not much sort of uh, paying attention about our inner value. That is a problem. So the modern, existing modern education, very much oriented about the material value. That's uh, what is it, a mistake. The edu materialistic education should combine with uh, inner value, not, not religion, but inner value. That's very important. And knowledge about our mind, about our emotion, as an academic subject we should include in education field. Okay, so younger generation. Now you have the opportunity, uh, eventually, you see, uh, some change in existing modern education where uh, not sort of adequate, you young people, you see, should uh, think more, okay. Okay, now next. Your Holiness, the next question is from Vietnam, a student. Good morning, yes. Your Holiness. Uh, my name is Ling. I'm a 20 year old student. My question for you today is it's a reality that we will die one day, and this can create fear within us. How can we overcome this fear as well as help others to overcome the same fear? Thank you. Karsa, 
I think uh, Buddha also passed away. And last, uh, uh, I think, uh, 2,000 years, Marbe, 2,500. Uh, 2,500 years. So many great uh, scholars, great saints, all gone. So that's quite nature. So we also eventually have to die. So while we are alive, our life should be meaningful. That brings inner happiness, satisfaction. Okay. So even, you see, uh, uh, next week, Suppose to see dying and next week, uh, still few days here, uh, you try to uh, share you see, more deeper human value with your friend. Then at the time of dying, no regret. Okay. Thank you, Your Holiness. The next question is from Indonesia. 